Matt? Matt? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was so ready for your intro for this, uh, this like, uh, unexpected episode that we're recording right now. <laughs> Matt, um, in the time that we've done this podcast, time and time again, I think the greatest treasure troves that we have found are these obscure, weird TV appearances. That, yeah. And um, this is an interesting one. Because it's like we're only getting half the story here. We're we're getting Al in the finals and search as I might, I could not find the qualifying episode for Al to be on the Wheel of Fortune Music Stars Finals that aired on May 6, 1994. But Yeah, there's a Wheel of Fortune, like Music Stars charity edition and it seems like it was like a tournament where it was like qualifying rounds and people advance through those rounds um and we have the final round where tragically al spoiler alert al loses yeah um i i I can't wait to get into the whole thing but we don't see the round where he wins and advances to this final i also don't understand and maybe you know the answer in this round why are james brown and little richard sharing a seat so I'm going to try to explain this. So okay. there is an appe- there is a video that you can find on Seth Meyers' YouTube channel. It's a two Seth Meyers. It's okay. a two minute clip. He had Al on his talk show, uh-huh. and he said, "You were on Wheel of Fortune like 20 years ago." And this is uh-huh. from 2014, and Al says, "They called called me up, and they said he goes, my manager calls me." And says they want you to be on the Wheel of Fortune music tournament. And I said, that's not really something that I'm interested in doing. And then they said, well, Little Richard and James Brown already signed up for it. And I said, get me a ticket. (laughs) And so he goes and what he says is, I got to watch James Brown learn what Wheel of Fortune and the game of (laughs) Hangman is. And goes, so we're doing, I think Little Richard was essentially there to help James Brown understand the game. Um, Seriously? Oh my God. I mean, that, that makes sense. He said that. They're doing the test, like the first round. And he's like, and I'm watching it from behind the scenes because I'm not in the qualifying episode. Right. He goes, and James spins the wheel and it lands on a, a chunk of money. And they go, all right, James, what what letter do you want? And he goes, uh, uh, <sighs> and he goes, and the production's kind of like, James, it's a 30 minute show. Like, we, we got to have something. So then he goes, how about you give me an A? And they said, um, no, Mr. Brown, when you spin the wheel, you have to, you have to say a consonant. And he said, oh, well then Europe. (laughs) Oh no. Oh God. Oh my God. So what we find out here, first of all, crazy. When you think about the fact that we are now about at the time that this episode comes out, it's 2024. So this is a 30 year old episode of wheel of fortune and Pat Sajak and Vanna white have like just announced that they're retiring like yes. now, oh, right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, no, it's, it's like, it's crazy. I mean, we even clocked, this was a, a while ago where we talked about stuck in a closet Al with recorded yeah. stuck in a closet. Vanna was relatively new. That is years before this. Yeah. I wonder if he brought that up at all at any point. Like, I'd love to know if in that first episode, if they brought up, you wrote a song about Vanna White. I know. I God, I what a shame that we don't have more of that kind of footage, because you'd think, I mean, if the Wheel of Fortune people had any had done even a small amount of research, they would have been able to figure that out. Although I don't know how. I mean, we don't know enough about Vanna White. I don't know how Vanna White responds (laughs) to to the. Did you know I wrote a song called Stuck in a Closet with you? (laughs) She's just like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> they do announce so that we can like lock a time frame a little bit here. Um, that Al is currently on tour promoting Alapalooza. Alapalooza, yes, that's right. That this is airing. And uh, we already said he's up against the combo of James Brown and Little Richard and Trump's favorite country artist, Lee Greenwood. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, like, what a what a 
final round. <laughs> Four people. I, again, guys, this is it's up, up online. I think we watch this on Daily Motion. Right it's now. on That's YouTube what, and Daily Motion. It is on you YouTube can watch as it on well. Both but, ways, yeah. but yeah, this is this is the four people standing in a row. <laughs> Lee Greenwood, God bless the USA's Lee Greenwood, Little Richard, James Brown, and Weird Al. I mean, it is the most wild. I, I can understand. It's it's you know the James Brown stuff is funny, and even in this episode, like what actually made it to air, there are multiple times where James takes an uncomfortably long time to <laughs> say a letter after he spins, and it's clear that he doesn't fully. They actually he got one. He did get one correct. He did, this, but, okay, in, but in, I I clocked this. There are two full puzzles where James Brown and Richard, Little Richard don't correctly guess a single letter no they are really having a hard time (laughs) and and it does seem like little richard has a look on his face that is like a combination of like annoyance and concern the (laughs) whole time because it's like this clearly like we're playing for charity they're both they both have separate charities and they say in the show if you win we're going to split the money between your two charities yeah so little richard's looking at giving half of zero dollars to at this point (laughs) and 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 james brown at one point in the episode just takes a moment like you know they talk to the people and he tells a like short story about how Little Richard helps like break him, like came to see him in Georgia when he was young. And James is trying to tell this sweet story about how he owes a lot of his career to Little Richard. And the look on Little Richard's face is just like, dude, shut up. Yeah. Shut up, dude. You're talking too much. You got yeah. No one needs to hear this. No yeah. one needs to hear this story. And uh, man, it's just, I, I don't know if I'm reading into it too much. And of course, you know, the sad, like, th- we have to address this is a point where James Brown, it is well documented. He is on drugs. He is not in a good space. This is a couple of years after his legendarily insane TV interview where he had like gotten into a, a domestic altercation. He got out on bail or on bond and they were like, James, are you worried? And he just starts like singing his own songs on television yeah, because he can't even answer these questions. Like the end of James Brown's life is very sad. And I mean, he seems like he's having fun, but he also seems like he has no idea where he is or what is going yeah. on. Uh, let me ask you a question about this. Yeah. So do you think, watching this episode, do you think that Wheel of Fortune has gotten harder over the last 30 years, or do you think that they threw a lot of softballs at the celebrities in this? Because I felt like this was four very easy puzzles to solve. It did seem very easy, and I don't... I mean, Jeopardy is legendary for that, right? When they do Celebrity Jeopardy, everything is dumbed down a significant amount because they assume these people aren't as smart as the average trivia person and it's for charity. So they want people to to win, do well. And if it's like, we're raising money for charity and everyone tanks, then it's not yeah. <laughs> as fun for anybody. So I assume it was dumbed down a little bit. I haven't watched enough modern Wheel of Fortune to know how it compares to that. But yeah, I mean, the first... The first category we see, the category was Clue. Clue. And the answer winds up being Lassie's breed. And then they got extra points if they could say what breed of dog Lassie was. Which, and Al got that. Yeah, of course Collie. Al got that. Pop culture guy. He figured it out. He solved the puzzle and he got Kali. Round two was a person. I think it was just person, right? Mm-hmm. And it was, the answer was soul singer Billie Holiday. Blues, blues singer Billie blues Holiday. Blues singer. Excuse me. Yeah. Blues singer Billie Holiday. And uh, first of all, hilariously, I love the fact that Lee Greenwood, there's so many letters on the board. It was very obvious who the person was. And Lee Greenwood <laughs> did not have the name Billie Holiday ready to go. Well, That's probably not part of his. I don't, I don't know. So here's the thing. I've debated this a million times from the few times I watch Wheel of Fortune. I think that when you know the answer, you still want to keep risking the spin because you have guaranteed money for every correct letter you guess. So you almost want to get it all the way down to where all that's left is vowels and then solve the puzzle. But you are running the risk of hitting a lose a turn or a bankrupt. or Because I've always wondered that. I don't think you get really anything for solving the puzzle quickly. Like there's those people who will like that's guess true. one and letter actually, and solve it right you're, away. You're right. I also <laughs> just realized I have it backwards. Round two was the one that Lee Greenwood got, which was the quote. And it was... Ray, a drop of golden sun. Yeah. That was Lee Greenwood got that. But then in round three, I don't know the way I saw, I only watched it the one time, but I remember him having like a lot of letters. And did he guess something? I couldn't remember That's if he right. guessed No, you're wrong. right. He guessed it wrong. He, get, he guessed, he guessed it wrong. the it, wrong letter. <laughs> it, fully on the board was blues singer, Billy, 
and it was like H O L. Yeah. H O L I. And he just did not know that was like, he, he really could have had it because it goes to James Brown. And as confused as James Brown was, <laughs> he knew enough to know that he was like, I know what this is. Yeah. And he spun, got a letter and then solved it and, and won the round. Yeah, so because it was basically once they got the, I knew it was Billy holiday very early on. Like yeah. just based on because I think they had I L L and H blank yeah, totally. L I where I was like, all right, that's Billy Holiday. Yeah. And then as soon as they said B and I saw B L two missing yes. letters, like yes. I was like, all right, blue singer Billy Holiday. Got it. Yeah. Like yep, exactly. But I wrote down, as we talked about this, that G is the first letter that James Brown and Little Richard get correct. Then James Brown asks to buy a vowel and doesn't say anything for an uncomfortably long oh, time. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that James, he's like, I'd like to buy a vowel, sure. And then it's just pause, pause, pause. <laughs> and then so quietly he goes, I. I. <laughs> and then Pat Sajak is like, I think I heard, was that I? I think I heard I. Let's go with an I. And it was like, oh man, they're really trying to like move this game along. And it was like, when... James Brown solves that puzzle correctly. Little Richard gives him like a tap, a pat on the shoulder that is as if he was four years old. Yeah. And he won something at a carnival and his dad's like, nice job, kid. You got it. Now, there did I, go. did I miss, I hope I didn't clock this incorrectly, but I believe during the second puzzle, Al guesses the letter T. It's not in the puzzle. And then it comes to James Brown who spins the wheel and asks, is there a T? Yep, that's absolutely right. <laughs> and and, and little the audience Richard doesn't even react. Yeah. Horrified. <laughs> little Richard looks horrified. It's just kind of so quiet. And Pat Sajak just goes, nope. Nope. <laughs> and they just move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's, I mean, again, poor James Brown. <laughs> he was having a hard time. I, I love the fact that Al, like, of course, as we said, Al has parodied James Brown. Um, obviously must be a huge fan. And of Little Richard. I mean, my God, who's not a fan of Little, Little Richard? Little Richard. I mean, that's legendary stuff for Al to stand next to, even if both of them are confused and annoyed as to why they are there. Um, you got to give credit to Little Richard because you and I are the same age, right? Yes. I, I'm i speaking for myself, but I feel like I'm speaking for both of us. I'm pretty sure I knew who Little Richard was in the late 80s, early 90s before I knew that Little Richard was a musician. You know, like he just probably true. Yeah, he really like in that late 80s, early 90s part of his career, he was doing a lot of like television because I remember him probably the first time I ever saw him was the Pee Wee's Playhouse Christmas special. Yes, but that was a big one. But he did a lot of kids television at that time for whatever reason. And he's so like, like it's oh, he's amazing. It's interesting to think about because based on James Brown's story and also just based on their careers. Little Richard is older than James Brown. Maybe not by much, but but a little bit older, like an older brother level. But he just seems like he is still so on top of the ball in this. Like he's You know really what's amazing? Because I, I, I was just gonna say I thought Little Richard would be significantly older than James Brown. Little Richard was born in nineteen thirty two. James Brown was born in nineteen thirty three. Oh, so it's a they year are, difference. They are the same age, wow. basically. But you know, I mean, you could not. I mean, watching this, two completely different people. Um, and like oh you my said, God, yeah. Like you said, also, this is like peak of James Brown's drug addictions. But yes, um, I appreciate a few things. A, I appreciate it that after every single puzzle, they go to commercial and we get a video clip from one of the uh, performers. So we get Bedrock Anthem from Al at that point. Yes. Um, you know, I know it's an old song. It is still weird to me to think of how old Lee Greenwood's God Bless the USA actually 1984. is. 1984. <laughs> like, I had to check myself because, again, so talking about like generationally, like I had that, or I should say we almost certainly had that song have a big resurgence at on September 11th. Yes. There was a massive like return to that song, uh, God Bless the USA. and But it predates that. It was written... It was originally featured for like Ronald Reagan, yeah. like campaign stuff. Now, Lee Greenwood says, I did a little bit of research on Lee Greenwood for this, which was very painful for me. He's not great. Uh, <laughs> he, he said he just wrote the song because he wanted to. But basically, immediately, it gets used in campaign ads and films promoting Ronald Reagan for president in the 80s. Yeah. Like that's the primary initial use. Um, it keeps reappearing anytime 
uh, some conservative politician is looking for something to uh, to hit their message home, and he has sung it at you know as recently as at Trump rallies. Yeah, pretty much any any Republican candidate, Lee Greenwood is all the more than happy to show up and sing this song at it's, at it an really a rally or inauguration or anything. Um, hey man, I do a podcast about one hit wonders, and you have know, you covered Lee Greenwood? I don't think he technically counts. I think he had a second hit somewhere. Uh, but as far as someone being like, hey, if this is the song I'm known for, I'm gonna ride this bad boy <laughs> to the sun. I gotta give him credit for that. He he really locked in on what people were were looking to lean Greenwood for, and he made sure that he uh, was was giving them that, if nothing else. Uh, Lee Greenwood had, I'm just looking now, seven number ones on the Hot Country Songs list. Um, he also had a song called IOU in 1983 that was hit number 53 on the Hot 100. I, it seems like it was something something of a more niche. I, I don't know what exactly. I know the rules for One Hit Wonder. Are, I barely know the rules, too. So maybe are, he are counts. Are vague and, and movable, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, maybe we just it, don't want to talk about him. Is also it, that, that is, I mean, who wants to do that, really? Let's be real. I, I mean, I was almost sad funny, that he was on Wheel of Fortune. I'm like, oh, man, now we got to talk about this guy. <laughs> I mean, again, let's let's just say, like, watching Weird Al lose to Lee Greenwood is something that I was not prepared to experience today. No, that was devastating. That was that was hard for me to experience. I'm I'm sorry to even have to tell you guys that that is what happened. He had a impressive run. Lee of Greenwood not in hitting, one round, the, yeah. the round he won, he hit the thirty five hundred dollar mark and had a bunch of letters on it, and that's the only reason why he beat Al was because yeah. he had a single round where he hit a great space on the wheel and one then wound up winning that puzzle, which is again, how wheel of fortune yeah, that's works. How I'm the not trying played. to, I don't have to like Lee Greenwood to take away. He won. He yeah, did. He, he won did the win. game. He, and you um, know, he was raising money for the families that were lost on the challenger explosion. So, uh, good. I mean, you can't take away a good cause and all that stuff. No, you can't take, I, I'm, it was interesting. Cause I thought that like he was raising money for the challenger families. That is like, this is eight years later. Yeah. That's a long time. I mean, not to take away from the families of the Challenger victims, but eight years after raising money for the Challenger, that was surprising for me to hear. I was like, I mean, I guess, I don't, look, if I'm never going to completely pretend that someone's trash, <laughs> even if I want to. I mean, sure. realistically, they probably need that money more in 1994 than they did in 1986. Because if you know anything about when there's a major level of grief, everybody else is able to move on, but not the people dealing with the grief. You know what? That's fair. So that the fact fair. that eight years later, he's like, these families probably still really need help after yeah. this. Like good for him. I, I'm not going to take that away. Do you like to laugh, geek out on music and learn all about that band or artist who had that one song back in the day, but then seemed to fall off the face of the earth. If so, you need to subscribe to one hit thunder. Together with an array of interesting and hilarious guests, we do a weekly dive into one-hit wonders like Eiffel 65's Blue, Krayshawn's Gucci Gucci, EMF's Unbelievable, Delamitri's Roll to Me, Los Del Rio's Macarena, Musical Youth's Pass to Duchy, and even Patrick Swayze's She's Like the Wind. So are you subscribed to One Hit Thunder or what? As Desiree would say, you gotta be. And as K7 would encourage, you gotta come baby come and join in on the fun of the One Hit Thunder podcast. So he goes to the bonus round. He has someone there with him, and I don't remember who this woman is. It, it was, was an opera singer. It okay. was um uh oh god, I'm gonna forget her name. I should have written it down. Uh, a somewhat notable opera singer. Okay. I had heard her name before. I'm not that. That's not my world really, but I I did recognize the name. So there's I don't things... know why she's there helping him. No clue. They're literally. They, Pat Sajak is like, look who we found. Yeah. <laughs> she, I wonder if she just happen to be a contestant i'm imagining probably right rightfully that this entire week of music challenges was all shot in a day maybe two days uh, tops probably you know probably, what i mean like yeah, two days tops they can't you can't have people like that coming back for a week that's 100 too much so no, they no. probably just rocket it through all those and she just happened to be there um yeah. so he goes to this final round the bonus round and it's thing and between the letters that they give him and the letters that him and this opera singer guess, they get, of the five-letter word, they get three of the letters. M-O-R at the back. They have to guess the two letters in the front. 
I'm in my house yelling tumor. I'm like, tumor, it's got to be tumor. And then Al runs over after they get it wrong and says that it's humor. And probably well, if you notice Al, the first thing Al says is tumor. Yeah. So so these idiots, Lee Greenwood and this opera singer, they're like, OK, here you go. Start solving armor. the puzzle. And they keep saying armor and rumor. Yeah. And it was like, no, we've already established there's one R. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you stop saying words with more R's. That's just definitely, and I understand like yeah. people, you on wheel of, like this is, you know, a challenging thing to, you're in the moment and you're struggling with it. But because it was for charity, they lose. And Pat's like, why don't we bring over our other people and just let's see if we can get it. If someone else can get it. Yeah. And Al, Al, James Brown and little Richard just kind of saunter over. <laughs> and Al just goes, tumor, rumor, humor, or humor, t- uh, tumor, humor. And Pat's like, yeah, humor. That was humor. It. Got it. And then the opera woman looks at him and goes, humor is a thing? <laughs> and he says, you play in our house, you play by our rules. Yeah, he was like, I don't tell you how to sing arias. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, fair, you know, but fair play, fair play, Pat Sajak. But I, I mean, of course, humor is a thing. Yeah. It's not the thing you're thinking of. But again, have you watched this show before? Yeah. Especially in the final round, they're trying to be a little bit tricky with the Yeah, and the thing is, it's always thing because it's, Anything can count as a thing, essentially. Anything can be a thing. Um, so I want to talk about bonus rounds for a second, though, because Pat Sajak makes a reference to the last time Al was there. He jumped on him when he won the game. Yes. And I was able to find that bonus round uh, where Al, based on just perfect letter guessing, gets <laughs> no... Blank, blank, RM, done. <laughs> and the timer is going, and he very slowly goes, No <laughs> harm, <laughs> done. And then when they yep. say it's correct, he is going ballistic. He yep. like jumps in the Pat Sajak's arms. He's flailing around. He collapses to the ground and is convulsing. It is everything you want. Al to be on a game show, you get in that 20 seconds of him celebrating. He almost climbs up a little bit on the set decoration that the wheel is in. Yeah. Like he's, he's, is, he, he definitely went rogue. Another great moment. He fully jumps like legs in the air into Pat Sajak's <laughs> arms and like bear hugs him like a wrestling move. And another great moment where Pat Sajak jokes about it, but a look on his face, I think he was slightly annoyed that Al did that. <laughs> Uh, he, he, Al, there's, uh, Pat, Pat Sajak a, makes the joke. He's like, uh, congratulations, Al. You will be hearing from my attorney. Yeah. There is a world in which Al could have very easily pulled Pat Sajak to the ground. Oh my God. He could have knocked him over. They could have fallen on top of like the steps leading up to the wheel. The, the, the pointy side of a stair going into the small of your back. Oh yeah. No, there's damage. It, it, it's, but you know, that's, that's Al. Yeah. You invite Al on your show. You're going to get what you get, you know? Yeah. To, if you want someone to be calm, invite Kam Al Yankovic, but that's not who yes, you called Yes, exactly. Up. Exactly. <laughs> invite Lee Greenwood, who has no emotion the entire time he's on that <laughs> not, show. Even that when not he a wins. Lick? Even it's... when he wins, he just seems annoyed to be there. He's like, just like, oh, God, that means I got to do something else. <laughs> uh, the, I love the fact in that final round, uh, Al... Uh, in the final round we see from uh, the previous episode, Al's so smart. Like he actually, like nobody, very few people, again, I don't want to seem like I'm too much of an expert on Wheel of Fortune because I haven't really watched this show in years, but Al actually does thoughtful, smart picks with his letters when he sees what he has on the board and what he has to work with. Like if you have a word that's N, the letter N and then a blank, and that's it, just two letters, that has to be the word no. Yeah. There's nothing else that could be there. So you have to pick. And by knowing that, he got a- additional space. Like he was really, you could see him like looking at what he had and being like, okay, that's got to be an O. So I'm definitely having that be my vowel. This four letter word, I know what this is. It's probably got to be an N or a D, like words that end certain ways. Like it, it was it's very, if, very if you strategic see a, picking. If you see a single spot, it's either going to be A or I. Right. Yeah, like exactly. Like it's it's figuring that out. He also always made S his first letter, just playing the odds. You know what I mean? Like there there's a good chance, especially the more words that are up there, that an yeah. S is somewhere. Al always made S his first letter, and James Brown, whether it was called or not, always said T. And it never worked out for him. He just was like T. No. 
<laughs> and then in the next round, Al says it first. Like, just that was all James Brown had in his head was T. I think he re- said H one other time. Like, the poor guy. It really, it was. I mean, that was probably for me the highlight of the whole thing. Was like watching what looked like James Brown being supervised by Little Richard on some sort of weird like work release program. Which, like, I it's which, just crazy. Side note, Little Richard didn't bring anything to the table, mind uh, you. It seems like he was almost not allowed to help. <laughs> like, he doesn't say He doesn't anything. call a single letter. He doesn't guess the puzzles. He doesn't spin the wheel. James is doing everything, and Little Richard's just looking at him like, that was a stupid choice. That's what I mean. I almost feel like he's there as a handler for James Brown the whole time. It seems that way. It reminds me of, like, that bodyguard hiding out behind LL Cool J <laughs> on remote control. I was like, what is this guy doing here? He's just, like, supervising. Listen, Pat, I know you're listening. <laughs> now that you're retired, if you want to come on, we'll ha- we'll happily do a little bonus episode with you just telling us the story of this. Pat Sajak or Vanna White, I want I want an inside. I mean, Vanna would be a, a better. We gotta I mean, have Vanna on the show to talk about her song and then talk about working with Al on this show. That's that's really that's yeah, that's my goal. Let's, let's put the feelers on this show. All right, I don't know. Does anyone know how to get in touch with Vanna White? <laughs> I think you, you just never yell know. her name out and t- just e- yell e- out a letter and she'll show up. Every once in a while, these <laughs> people on our on our social media groups and stuff like come out with amazing like the, uh, our friend who was on remote control. Like we have enough reach now. Let's if someone is like, I'm Vanna's nephew. It's like, yeah. oh my god, please, please, <laughs> Put us in touch. please make this happen uh, desperately. Well, Matt, one more note just because I love this so much for for uh, Al on on Jeopardy. Uh, sorry, on Wheel of Fortune. In the first game he plays that he wins, he wins the jackpot, which is $25,000 for charity. And the $25,000 plus what he already won puts him, I don't know the exact number, but just above $27,000. Al's it magic does. number. He hit twenty seven. He did hit $27,000. What are the chances of that? I know. Hey, unfortunately... I guess Lee Greenwood's favorite number is thirty something dollars. Because... I oh god, yeah. <laughs> but um... and Al was giving his money to comic relief, which I also love. That's a great like. Of course, he's doing that. Good for him, and uh, and a great thing. Like yeah. No, so Al, despite losing the game, Al still did manage to win. And in the final round, I think they say they gave everyone's charity an additional five thousand dollars as a courtesy thing, since Lee Greenwood blew the <laughs> final round. Yeah. They're like, everyone will get an extra 5000 So Al raised a lot of money for charity. And then they gave what the grand total was of all of them combined. Like, I think that all the charities combined got like 100000 It was $175,000. Yeah. Which was I think that crazy. was including all of the previous people from the episodes. Like, I think that was the grand total that week that they gave away. More um, than 30000 of that was Al's winnings. You know so, what's- well done. <sighs> You know, I never really thought about this until this second, but like, man, a show, a show like Survivor or Who Mm. Wants to Be a Millionaire or literally any of these game shows where there are millions of dollars being given away every year, right? You have to like justify that much money in like ad revenue and everything else to like make that viable. now take that and imagine that you're giving thousands of dollars to someone every single day on like Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. And like, that's how strong the advertising quality still is on these like live television game shows. Primetime game shows that people want. Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely it's insane yeah. to think about in that in that lens. Um, all right. Well, Matt, we're still not quite ready to talk about Alapalooza, even though Al was touring on Alapalooza. Uh, we got a mailbag left to go. So so send us messages and tell us like what we've gotten wrong. Maybe, you, maybe you're going to tell us about some deep cut from Lee Greenwood we need to hear. Look, we really need people to sign off on where they <laughs> land on Airline Amy, uh, since that's the most divided oh, we've that's ever the other been big on one, any yes. song. Oh, I, I, I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. And we'll be back next week. Bye. <laughs> listening to the Geekscape Network.